Boobity boop, boobity boop. Hi. Hello. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Elon Osborne, and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. And if you enjoy my way of presenting said info to you, please consider these many ways to help support this channel. Like this video, subscribe, become a patron, rock some merch, get some tunes, read my children's book to your kids. Link in description. Link, link in description. Boy! Just real quick, if you want me to review a particular piece of equipment, I would highly consider joining my Patreon where I use those proceeds to buy particular pieces of equipment. Maybe it's something that I can't actually have a company send out to me, or I can't get that particular item on loan. So that way I can just buy it to review for you instead of having to wait for a company to send it to me. So join. All your friends are jealous. And lastly, if you like what you see from Aperion Audio, don't forget to use my discount code EO10 for 10% off your purchase. Now, what's in the box? All right. Gloves, microfiber cloth, and literature. Styrofoam off reveals two little buddies hanging out. Got a magnetic grill, nice. Plastic off reveals the speaker and that 5.25 inch woofer and that base port. Nice gold binding posts with that removable pin so you can adjust the tweeter response. In this video, I'm breaking down the Aperion Audio N5B bookshelf speakers. These two-way speakers have 5.25 inch aramid fiber woofers, a one inch silk dome tweeter surrounded by Aperion's signature aluminum faceplate and logo capped with a metal grill. They are 7.5 inches wide, 11.8 inches tall, and 7.9 inches deep. These speakers do have a signature reflex port below the woofer for some fantastic bass response. Removable magnetic grill, check. And just like all the Novus family speakers, you'll notice that there is an ever so subtle slope to the front of the speakers to create an even phase alignment between treble and bass drivers. On the back, we have binding posts and this unique feature here. It's a nifty little tweeter adjustment pin. Leave it in for your standard voicing for crisp, clear, high frequencies, or remove it to reduce its output by negative three decibels for a more mellow treble response. And now, some more detailed specs. Moving on. How do they sound? I first tested these speakers as my surround left and surround right in a 5.2.4 Dolby Atmos configuration. In that scenario, they performed very well. They enhanced the sound stage and provided the immersive audio that I was expecting. These bookshelf speakers sounded like they ran just a tad bit warmer than their larger counterparts, not being so absolutely crisp in the high end. Although as surround speakers, that really didn't matter all that much at all. Once I had done enough testing in the living room setup, I took these bad boys and set them up in my master bedroom. In that scenario, I tested them out as my front left and front right in a 5.1 configuration, along with the Klipsch reference theater pack. After making some adjustments to the crossover frequencies in the receiver, I popped in Return of the King. And again, as front left and front right speakers, they complemented the system very well, providing the soundstage with great music and sound effects being loud when it needed to be loud, and soft and subtle and detailed when called for. After a while, I kept watching Return of the King, but I changed the receiver's configuration to 2.0, so that the sound was only coming out of the N5Bs. I watched the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, and these speakers had surprisingly good bass response. Since their frequency response does dip down to a solid 45 hertz, I was still able to get a sense of depth and the grand scale of that battle when the Oliphants decided to start charging. I mean, of course, I would recommend a subwoofer all day for a scene like that, but the N5B's performance was impressive nonetheless. 
Stereo imaging was great, sounding like the dialogue was coming straight from the TV. But isolating the sound down to just those two speakers alone did bring some tonal qualities to the forefront. As I stated before, these speakers do have a little bit warmer timbre than the 6T Towers and the N5C center channel. So when these speakers are pulling all the weight, they're a little bit more mellow than I would personally like. Still rocking the 2.0 configuration with my receiver, I switched over to Spotify to see what these bookshelf speakers can do with music. Again, a little warmer than I personally like, with the lyrics sitting just a little further back than I prefer. I found myself needing to turn up the volume a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Although like with the Battle of the Pelennor Field scene from Return of the King, the bass response with music was all there. The kick drum and synth bass lines from The Weeknd's Blinding Lights were much larger than I expected from these bookshelves. Listening to DJ Snake's You Know You Like It also provided some deep bass that I was not prepared for. Although the hi-hat from that same song just wasn't as pronounced as they sounded when I was listening to them on the 6T Towers, for example. But. Yes, and. And clearly, this is a big but. I am not going to completely discount the warm timbre of these bookshelves until I hook it up to a proper amp in the near future. I talked a little bit about this in the review of the 6T Towers, but all the speakers in the Aperion Audio Novus family have a nominal impedance of 4 ohms. I honestly don't have a receiver or amp in my possession that is truly meant for 4 ohm speakers. Sure, I get by with what I have, but until I get a receiver with pre-outs, to which I can power these speakers with an external amp, I just may not be hearing these speakers full potential. It's just the facts, bruh. 4 ohm speakers can handle more power, and that's when they thrive. So stay tuned for an update on all these speakers when I have a proper amp to power them. Bottom line is, I say these speakers work incredibly well as a team player, as opposed to carrying the load all on their own. Aperion Audio even offers a 5.0 system, with two pairs of these N5Bs and the N5C center channel, which would still be a great system if you couldn't spring for the 5.0 system with the 6T towers. So there you have it, folks. Are a pair of the N5B bookshelf speakers now on your home theater wish list? If so, once again, don't forget to use my discount code EO10 for 10% off your purchase. Be sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell and stuff, join my Patreon. You get it, you're smart. And of course, always be listening. <laughs>